Good day, everyone. We are Group 3 from 2SM2. And we're going to present a video case digest between Bank of the Philippine Islands and Norman and Angelina Yu. As for the first fact present in the case, the respondents Norman and Angelina Yu were doing business as Twanson Trading and Twanson Builders Corporation. They borrowed a sum totaling to 75 million pesos from FEBTC or Far East Bank and Trust Company. However, the youths were having difficulties in paying for their debt, so they asked the bank which later on merged with Bank of, bank of the Philippine Islands for a loan restructuring or renegotiation of the contract, which were then accepted by the bank. The youths also asked DPI to release some of their mortgage lands that was used as a loan collateral because the value of those lands altogether has exceeded the total appraised value of the loan. But PPI has denied the request and proceeded to foreclose the properties, even the ones owned by Twanson Builders. Because of this, respondents Norman and Angelina Yu has filed a complaint against BPI and against the winning bidders of the foreclosed lands, which is Magna Craft Corporation. But the case was later on dismissed upon the observation of a compromise agreement between the two parties, which are the respondents and Magda Craft Corporation, that three out of ten of the lands were proved to be owned by Norman and Angelina Yu. The U.S. decided to file a new complaint against BPI, this time asking for recovery for the excessive imposed penalty charges, attorney's fees, and foreclosure expenses. BPI admitted the broken down amount of the foreclosure of the mortgage properties stated in the notice of sale, inclusive of the principal debt, interest, and a penalty charge. BPI further admitted that the proceeds of the sale appeared to be more than the amount stated in the notice of sale with a higher winning beat from MagnaCraft. According to BPI, it turned over to the clerk of court the excess in a foreclosure. And with the said higher proceeds in the bidding, litigation expenses with attorney's fees, interests, and penalties were now included as recomputed. The use claimed that B BPI imposed excessive charges and principal and interest which were computed as 50% of the principal per annum. Initially, the RTC granted only a partial summary judgment, it reduced the penalty charge to 12% per annum until fully paid, but maintained the attorney's fees as it is reasonable. When the U.S. sought partial reconsideration, the RTC removed the penalty charges for non-compliance with the Truth in Lending Act and reduced the attorney's fees to 1% of the principal and interest. Now, we present you the rulings of the court. First is summary judgment was proper. Summary judgment is when the essential facts of the case are uncontested or the parties do not raise any genuine issue of fact. To resolve the issue of the excessive charges allegedly incorporated into the auction bid price, the RTC simply had to look at the pleadings of the parties, loan agreements, promissory note, and the real estate mortgage between them, the foreclosure and bidding documents, the admission and other disclosures between the parties do during pre-trial. Since the parties admitted not only the existence, authenticity, and genuine executions of these documents, but also what they stated, the trial court did not need to hold a trial for the reception of the evidence of the parties. The issues raised by BPI are, are issues that could be readily resolved based on the facts established by the pleadings and admissions of the party. Indeed, BPI has failed to name any document or item of fact that it would have wanted to adduce at the trial of the case. What were the penalty charges that were established? First and foremost is the violation of Section 4 of the Truth Lending Act in, of RA 3765, wherein penalty charge, which is the six, uh, which is the six number in the Truth and Lending Act, where it states that liquidating liquidated damage which has resulted from breach and also falls under the finance charge. Next, BPI failed to state the penalty charges in the disclosure statement, which 
the use have signed on the promissory note on the same day that the disclosure statement, on the same date as the disclosure statement, and which all contained the penalty clause. In this case, BPI did not show any inc any did not show increase of rate in penalty charges that that it collected from the use. Lastly, the promissory note signed by the use contained data including penalty charges required by the Truth in Lending Act. The court is authorized to reduce penalty charges that is deemed unreasonable and iniquitous. BPI already collected a sum of 2.7 million pesos in interest and a penalty of 36% per annum on the total amount due. The Court of Appeals ruled that the original decision of RTC to reduce the imposed interest to 12% per annum is reasonable and fair. Regarding the attorney's fees, the decision to reduce it from 10% to 1% is affirmed by the court based on the following reasons. It is not essential to the cost of borrowing, but a mere incident of cost. Collection, rather. BPI already charged foreclosure costs. An attorney's fee of 10% of the total amount due is onerous considering the road effort that goes into extrajudicial foreclosures. That is all. Thank you.